Hello once again and welcome to Room 261. This is Algebra 2. This is uh, continuing our little video series on some factoring. Um, this is uh, a worksheet that you're getting on October 12th. And, and on the front of this particular page, it says factor out the GCF. Of course, GCF stands for greatest common factor. And so we're going to want to take a look at this and see what happens. So let's just do a few. So you want to ask yourself on number one here, um, is there a number that, you know, what is the largest number that, that goes into 4 and 16? And that's, that's in fact 4. And then you say to yourself, what is the, is the exponents here on P? P to the 4th and P cubed. And so, you know, knowing that P to the 4th, is p cubed times p, then you know p cubed goes into both of these. And so I'm going to pull out a p cubed here, and then I'm going to ask myself, what's left? And so uh, 4p cubed times what would give me 16p to the fourth? And of course, that's 4p. See, 4 times 4 is 16, and p cubed times p is p to the fourth. And then 4p cubed times what is 4p cubed? Well, it, we took the whole works out, and so um, it would be 1. And so you might notice that if you did multiply this out, um, we would have the same thing that we started with. All right. And so that's the answer here. Okay. Um, I pulled out the greatest common factor, and there we are. On number 2, we ask ourselves, is what's the greatest common factor between 9 and 36? And we would answer that as 9. And when we take a 9 out of 9x, we have x. And when we take a 9 out of 36, we have 4. And so again, we could check our answer. If we multiplied this out, we'd have 9x plus 36. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more. 63 plus 45b. It turns out that 9 is the common factor here. 9 times 7 is 63, and 9 times 5 is 45. And so again, we could multiply this out to see that it is in fact correct. On the next one, we know that 3 is the common factor of 3 and 6, and that n cubed would be the common factor of n cubed and n to the fifth. And so now we ask ourselves, 3n cubed times what is 6n cubed? And the answer to that is 2. And then 3n cubed times what is 3n to the fifth? And the answer to that would be n squared. We don't want to forget to put our minus sign in here. And so then we might, again, check. If we multiply this out, would we have the same thing? 3n cubed times 2 and 3n cubed times n squared, okay. Now, you know, if if we get ones that have three terms, such as the one down here, you know, there's no need to worry. We just ask the same question. What's the largest number? That goes into 14 and 21 and 21. And in that case, that's seven. And then the smallest exponent of the a's we see is, is a to the first. And so we'll pull out just an a and then we'll just say, all right, 7a times what is 14a? And the answer to that question is 2. 7a times what is 21a squared? And so that would be 3a. 7a times what is 21a cubed? And so that would be 3a squared. Again, just as with the others, we could multiply this out and see that we're getting what we started with. 7a times 2 is, in fact, 14a. 7a times 3a is, in fact, 21a squared. And 7a times 21a cubed is, in fact, 3a squared. You know, on number 8, you might say, well, there isn't a number that goes into all three of those. And that's true. And so you wouldn't pull out a number, but you would also notice that there's an n in all of them. Okay. And so we'll pull out an n. And when we pull out an n, we'd have 10n squared minus 10 n or pardon me minus 9 n and then plus 1 make sure you have this plus 1 here remember that the test here is if you multiply it out would you get the same thing so n times 10 n squared is 10 n cubed n times negative 9 n is minus 9 n squared 
and n times 1 is in fact n. All right. Well, that concludes the video on the greatest common factor part of the worksheet.